In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate a company's net operating profit after taxes, which is commonly known as NOPAT. NOPAT is a company's profit assuming the firm had zero debt. It's also known as unlevered net income, tax affected earnings before interest and taxes, or earnings before interest after taxes. Note that EBIAT and NOPAT are the same thing. Now, NOPAT is really helpful because it allows you to compare the profitability of two different companies independent of their financing structure. And that's because it excludes the effects of interest expense. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways to calculate NOPAT, but they'll both arrive at the same answer. The simpler approach is to take a company's earnings before interest and taxes, or EBIT, and multiply it by 1 minus the company's tax rate. Now, when using EBIT, most people use the company's operating income as EBIT. However, you will find some people that include the effects of one-time non-operating gains and losses in EBIT. When it comes to the company's tax rate, you've got a couple different options. Some people prefer to use the company's marginal tax rate, which is the tax rate the company would pay on an additional $1 of profit. But other people prefer to use the company's effective tax rate. You can calculate the company's historical effective tax rate, or if you're trying to make projections, sometimes management will provide in its guidance what it thinks will be the effective tax rate going forward. Now, a slightly harder way to calculate NOPAT is to take the company's net income and make some adjustments to it to arrive at the NOPAT. We'll still get the same NOPAT, it's just a little more work. So if we take the company's net income and then we add to it the company's interest expense plus non-operating losses minus any non-operating gains times one minus the tax rate, this whole thing here, we add that to the company's net income, that will give us no pot. Now, if you're wondering why are we adding in these non-operating losses, subtracting non-operating gains as part of that adjustment, what we're trying to do is remove the effects of one-time gains and losses. For example, there might be a non-operating loss that's a one-time restructuring charge, and we want to factor that out when we're trying to calculate the company's core operating profitability. Now, let's use some data for a company inflatable tubs. Uh, so they make uh, inflatable hot tubs, or if you want to take an ice bath, that's a nice thing. You can buy it, put it in your basement, your living room, or maybe not your living room if you actually care about your furniture and don't want to have flood damage, but th that's another issue. So we've got some data here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use both of those formulas to calculate the company's NOPAT. So let's start with the easier one. If we take the company's earnings before interest and taxes, you can see that it's $300. And then just multiply by 1 minus the tax rate, which the tax rate is given as 25%, and you get to a NOPAT of $225. Now, I'm going to do the more complicated formula and show you that it still arrives at the same NOPAT. Okay, so we're going to start with the company's net income this time, which is $217.50. And then we're going to make those adjustments. Remember what the adjustments, we take the company's interest expense, which was $20. Then we take the non-operating losses, which are $40. And then we subtract the non-operating gains of $50. Okay, we take that. So $20 plus $40 minus $50. We get to this, this here is $10. Multiply it by 1 minus the tax rate. So this whole thing here is $7.50, and then we add that adjustment to the company's net income. That results in a NOPAT of $225, which was exactly the same as we calculated under the easier approach. Okay, so we end up with the same NOPAT either way. Now, I wanna show you in terms of the importance of NOPAT and interpreting it, why it matters. So what if this company had not had any debt at all? What if they'd been financed 100% by equity? How would that have changed things? So what I've got here, right here, is the actual original data that I gave you. And then here is the scenario if the company was financed entirely by equity. So if it was financed entirely by equity, interest expense would be zero because there's no debt, so there's no interest expense. Now, that means that the company's net income would be higher. Okay, see that there's a net income of $232.50, whereas before, when we had some interest expense, ended up being a net income of just $217.50. Okay, so you see that by not having any debt financing, just entirely equity financing, the company's net income turns out to be higher. However, the NOPAT is the same in each case. We have $225 of NOPAT. So in other words, if management decides, you know what, actually we don't want any debt, uh, we're going to have no interest expense, that is going to increase the company's net income but have no effect on NOPAT. Because remember, NOPAT excludes the effects of financing decisions. 
In other words, if you're comparing two companies and you're just looking at their no, net income, it might be that the one company has a lower net income, not because it didn't do as good a job, right, with its business operations. It could be that that company's management made different financing decisions. Maybe they decided to borrow money, okay, and that borrowing mo of money resulted in interest expense, which pulled down the net income. But with NOPAT, what we're trying to do is, what is the core operating profit of this company after subtracting taxes, but excluding the effects of any borrowing decisions or financing decisions made by management? And we see that in this case, even though the companies have different net incomes because they made different financing decisions, they end up with the same NOPAT.